Welcome back to Talkville, folks. We're here. We're excited. We had some delays today. You wouldn't know about that, but uh, my internet didn't work. And s- thanks, guys, for doing this a couple hours later. Um, I don't know what to do. I just my internet blew out, man, gone, and now uh, I got it back. So hopefully it will stick around. So thanks. You know, I, I read something about a director was like Tarantino goes they don't or George Lucas. He said when the picture starts rolling. Nobody cares about, oh, the actress was late or we this or we had this problem or we couldn't. No, they just want to see what's on 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 the film. That's it. They don't give a shit. If it's bad, it's bad. You have to figure all that shit out. They don't want to. They don't care about your problems. There, there's, a, there's another famous quote from Coppola. He was given somebody was giving him shit about doing like 37 takes. And the short end is he's like, well, it took 37 takes for the actor to know his lines. That's why we did 37 takes. Oh my God, that's embarrassing. But you're right. Nobody wants to hear the complaining. I mean, some of the behind the scenes stuff, I I would, I hope is interesting to some people, but yeah, no one wants to know how hard it is. No one cares. Yeah, no one cares. All right. Our uh, handles are Talkville podcast on all socials. Please follow us. And there's, there's a bunch of great conversations that people have uh, after episodes and they talk about episodes and it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, If you didn't get a chance to call our hotline, you can do so. 213 Jet Cute. And uh, leave messages for future episodes, and we urge you to do that and maybe not have the longest message. I think the longest one to record is like a minute. I wasn't happy. Yeah, that that's not a record you want to be. No, you don't want to beat that. You want to be like 20 seconds. Yeah, that's exactly right. And I know what 20 seconds is like. Oh, hang on. Hey, if you want to join Patreon and support the podcast, you're all we got. Uh, you really support the podcast. Um, patron. P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Talkville. Without you guys, we wouldn't be here, period. I'll, I've said enough of that. Um, Talkvillepodcast.com if you want to get great merch. Um, this artist who did the last uh, pictures of me and Tom, she just did another one. So we're going to be putting those up soon. Um, they're pretty dope. They're incredibly dope. And so I made only 50 prints off the original, and that's it. Once they're gone, they're gone. And they sold out last time. So... Those should be on yeah, there. So but, uh, talk you hear podcast. that, Osama? You hear that, Osama? Uh, lots of stuff. Tom and I are going to be uh, in lot, doing lots of cons. We're doing um, all sorts of cons. So go to my link tree and Instagram. The link tree has Cameo, and Tom's also on Cameo, and it has uh, all the cons. And uh, without further ado, let's get into it. Season three, episode 15, Resurrection. Wait a second. Is- Al said uh, the T-shirt should say, the CW, beautiful people in bullshit situations, because I said that on a podcast. <laughs> So uh, he says it was hilarious. It was in the uh, episode Shattered where I said that. So that could be a good T-shirt. So Bryce, maybe. Well, uh, I, I don't, I don't, I don't imagine the writers room being like so fond of their the moments that they have to go through in order to make the show work either. Especially these next two episodes. I mean, this is like, you know, they're they're trying to figure it out too. I know. God bless. Them. Believe me. Title Resurrection aired February 25th, 2004. Director, the late, wonderful, beautiful man, Terrence O'Hara. Uh, writers, Todd Slavkin, Darren Swimmer. Guest star, Francois Yip as Dr. Leah Tang. Camille Mitchell as Sheriff Nancy Adams. Jesse, or Jerry Wasserman as Dr. Jaeger Scanlon. He's a unique looking dude, that doctor. James Kirk as Garrett Davis. Tam, Tama Penicut. Tama Penicut. I know Tama, I just can't pronounce his name always, as Vince Davis. Uh, Battlestar Galactica, by the way. Uh, Jesse Wasserman I wonder if we, Watchmen. I wonder if we call him Captain Kirk on set or just Cap. James T. Kirk. You know, I messed with him. Without a doubt, I was messing with him. He's like, great, this guy. Julian Christopher as Dr. McIntyre. And uh, the synopsis, Clark uncovers a dark Luther Corp secret as he races to save the life of a classmate's brother, all the while protecting his father during a major surgery. You know, there were some touching moments here. We'll get into it. but yeah. uh, Tough episode. It was a tough episode, and one of the reasons I say this is watching it, it's tough, because, you know, we love John, but I will say that this is probably top three episodes that people have brought up to me at cons Why? when they talk about the show. A lot of times, there's a lot of people that watch the show with their parents, and now we're, what, 22, 23 years later, and some people have lost their fathers oh. since, and uh, this is uh, yeah. this ranks up there for the fans. The episode opens with Jonathan getting his heart scanned by Dr. McIntyre. He recommends that Jonathan put his shirt back on and that uh, get a triple bypass surgery. Clark is sitting in the waiting room, but here's the entire conversation with his super hearing. 
I, I will say in this, in this first scene real quick, I like the way that Jonathan plays the stubbornness and when the doctor just does it, the way the doctor plays it of just like not playing into Jonathan's like trying to make light of the situation. The doctor's like, I've known you for years. You can be a stubborn man. And Jonathan's like, uh, got me. Yeah. It's yeah, like, yeah. It's like, all right, all right, farm boy. I'm I'm a doctor. Listen, I went to med yeah. school. You listen to me. You listen to me, flannel boy. I know things yeah. that you don't. Flannel you boy. plow, I save lives. It's you know what I'm talking that. about? John Schneider, John Kent. It's basically that. Yes. Clark runs into his fellow classmate Garrett Davis, someone that no one's ever seen again. Always these classmates no one's ever seen, who is there for his brother suffering from a failing liver. They talk about their respective situations, and Clark says he always thought of his dad as a man of steel. Uh, that was really sweet. What was kind of crazy is like, <laughs> Clark's like, this can all work out. It's all going to be good. Beep, 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 beep. Your brother's dead. I mean, it happened like right after. I was like, gee, Louise, do not become a medium. <laughs> good Lord. Their conversation gets interrupted by a code blue in Garrett's brother's room. They rush in to find Vince receiving CPR from Dr. Scanlon unsuccessfully and dying. I remember this actor who played uh, Vince. I, just, I remember. Tanner. I remember him being either a boxer or a kickboxer. Like he, he, he. We talked about that. And I remember being like, this guy's such a stud. Like, what is he doing here? <laughs> really? I just thought he was like so handsome and such a studly dude. Like on set, I was like, this guy should be in movies. What's he doing For here? For you to like, remember he... someone, that's you must have had a real attraction. Yeah. Back in the waiting room, no, Martha learns what happened to Garrett and how he will need to stay with foster care now. She tells Clark and Garrett can stay with them for a little while. Martha mentions that Jonathan isn't sure if he'll have the surgery, so Clark decides to confront his father, urging him to have the surgery because of how important he is to him. Jonathan agrees to the surgery and tells his son, I'm not going anywhere. I was glad that Clark didn't make a decision to use his heat vision to like carterize some of Jonathan's heart. I was glad he didn't do that. <laughs> yeah, could you imagine? I'm going to take this into my own hands or my own eyes. <laughs> Jonathan agrees to the surgery. Uh, the Kents and Garrett head back home. Clark continues to be there for his classmate after the traumatic day he had. Their conversation is interrupted as Martha lets him know that the crematorium is calling to figure out where Vince's ashes should be spread. Jeez Louise. Garrett is confused because Vince should be getting buried next to his deceased parents. Something's going on in Smallville, folks. Something is going on. Outside the hospital, we see Vince's dead body being rushed into a helicopter and transported to Dr. Tang in Metropolis. The body gets carted into a full room of cage monkeys, and Tang administers a shot to Vince's chest, reviving him from the dead. Yeah. Now, this all, beca this all became... This is all better now. The Dr. Tang means more to me now because I watched the second, the next episode we're going to do too. And there's some backstory to her that you don't know, that we don't know about in this episode. But since I know it, rewatching this episode with you, she's fighting for her own life and survival. And we'll learn that in the next episode. But she's not just a bad person trying to do bad things. She's trying right. to protect herself. And, you know, she's like Oppenheimer in a, in a, in a very grandiose way. Well, her hand is kind of like her hands are tied. She, you know, she's, if she doesn't do something, she'll probably get killed. You know, she got right. herself in a bad situation here. Back in Smallville, Garrett and Clark go to figure out why Vince is being cremated. The doctors let them know that Vance or Vince was transported to Metropolis for an organ donor. Garrett believes the documents have been forged. Now, over at Luther Mansion, Chloe walks into an intense opening line from Lex above North Korean deportation. Chloe tells Lex that Dr. Tang is only in the U.S. because of a green card marriage arrangement that Lionel puppeteered. Lex thanks Chloe for her involvement up to this point, but doesn't want her getting any deeper. So two things in this scene. One, in the first three seconds as Chloe enters the door, you actually see a key light. Like you do? She walks, she walks right... Oh, right behind her. It's a it's a it's a three bulb light with cellophane over it. It's like they, she walks right past it when she talks to you. And then later, because they try to do a bunch of wonders in this, in the background, Chloe comes over and it's over Lex's shoulder into the window, and you see somebody in the window. Somebody goes, You're in the shot, move. And they go, uh, uh, and they run. Oh my gosh. Because remember that back hallway was so yeah. narrow and people used to like You noticed that though? Somebody, Did you not notice that, Ryan? No. Well, there, Mess there was ups. a huge shadow. And I watched it like three times. You could tell the person was like, what? Me? Uh, go that way. Okay. Oh, boy. Guys. Yeah. It's the old Nothing Game the of best Thrones here, coffee cup. Yeah. 
What are you going to do? It happens to everybody. Yeah. yeah, it happens. Back at the Kents, Clark and Garrett calm down after their <laughs> altercation with the doctor. Garrett continues to question what could have happened, and they get interrupted by a dead man walking as Vince greets them inside the barn. He says he has no idea what happened, and all he remembers is waking up in a lab in Metropolis. Vince starts to show the same effects of Adam in a previous episode with bleeding eyes. He then starts to turn yellow from liver failure and collapses. So within 13 minutes, we we meet Garrett, <laughs> see his brother die, find out his brother came back to life, then see him start to die again. Why did they let him escape? How? Oh, good question. I, I do like the way he played the eye bleeding, and I did believe that these two were brothers. I thought they did a good job of, of making the audience believe they were family. Yeah, I think um, this episode uh, had some really nice moments, but to me, the train just kind of went off the tracks a little bit and it just got a little sloppy and and just, you know, again, one of those things where, okay, I get it. We're dealing with the same shit that's going on with Adam and his eyes bleeding and they're, you know, he's, you know, he's under uh, Lionel Luther's grasps, grasp. So I, you know, I see a lot of that stuff and that's kind of cool, I guess, but it just, uh, again, I just, I don't know if I cared, but you know, right after this scene, they take his brother to back to the hospital. They do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They take it right back to the hospital and that no one talks about, oh, he was just here, but he died. Wait. Okay. <laughs> Jeez <laughs> Louise. They rush Vince back to med, the medical, Smallville Medical. Dr. Scanlon's yeah. confused on how Vince is still alive because his liver is rapidly deteriorating. What's more, he has no idea what the lab gave him or even the la that lab, that the lab exists, Ryan. Crazy. Clark now leaves the <laughs> hospital room, goes to another room with Jonathan inside prepping for his surgery. Instead of staying with his father for the surgery that Clark insisted he have, he decides to take a trip to Metropolis in search of a hidden lab to help a friend we've never seen before. Martha agrees that this is the right decision. <laughs> I mean, well, I guess, look, I guess if you're just trying to side on side with Clark, it's like he's trying to save, save somebody and trying to figure stuff out. And his dad's dying. I don't know. We okay. Do. Clark heads to the parking lot. He runs into Lana because we need a scene with Lana who's stopping by to visit his parents. <laughs> Clark talks about the experience with Vince and Lana shares the same bloody eye and injection stories that Adam was exhibiting. Huh? Mm. Now, back inside the hospital, we're forced to watch Garrett talking to his corpse of a brother, sharing a heartfelt moment. The doctor interrupts them to let Garrett know he's SOL because there's nothing they can do. Clark insists Chloe help to find the lab in Metropolis. He insists that he wants to do this because it takes his mind off the fact that he can't help his father. Chloe uses her contacts to figure out that the medevac chopper boys could have information into the lab's location. Clark meets with the pilot and threatens him into taking him to the lab. Tom, this was actually, uh, was it actually you coming out of the helicopter this time to get that shot? Did they literally just have to get you in, then hover above the ground, and then get you out? What was, what was that? Mm. I, oh, I don't recall, but... I'm looking at it right now. The helicopter is already on the ground. Time, money, safety. I bet that helicopter was sitting there. I got in the door, closed it, opened it up, and got out. Yeah. Yeah. There's no way they're just going to give me a run. Like, in a perfect way, I'd be like, hey, can you guys pick me up at the top of the hotel for work this morning? And we just start with that one shot? No. I no, doubt they did that. That didn't them. No. They arrive at a rundown building, and Clark uses his super hearing to discover that Lex is also there. This was kind of cool. Confronting Dr. Tang about her deportation and acting as a rogue ICE agent, Lex pushes Dr. Tang for information in the vial or else he'll have her shipped back to Pyongyang. Pyongyang. You, you did uh, a very specific pronunciation of that. Was, was there someone on set telling you how to say it? I'll, I'll, ship, you back, I'll ship you back to Pyongyang. I don't, yeah, felt, somebody it, probably it, told it to me right before. I go, how do you pronounce that? Okay, here we go. It felt deliberate. Was that good? I don't know, just no, it, it stuck out to me. It stuck out like I knew what I was doing. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. We love our fellows, our friends at BetterHelp. They're doing wonders. Ryan uses BetterHelp. Many of my friends, uh, it's just something that's helping a lot of people around here. And uh, I think therapy is the best thing in the world. Even if you don't think you have things to talk about, clearing your mind, understanding why you're thinking the way you're thinking 
it really helps to talk to someone. And look, do you ever feel like your brain is getting in the way of living your best life? Like you, you know what you should do or what's good for you, but you just can't seem to do it. Therapy helps you figure out what's holding you back so your brain can work for you instead of against you. Therapy is a great way to learn positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. It empowers you to be the best version of yourself. And it's way more convenient with BetterHelp. It's entirely online and designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire. It's so easy to do. Uh, you'll get matched with a licensed therapist. Switch therapist at any time, no additional charge. And that's not abnormal to want to get comfortable with a certain therapist. So don't think that's weird. BetterHelp is truly the best way to make your brain your friend. Give it a try. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Talkville today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Talkville. All right. Before they can continue, Clark super speeds into the room, steals the vial. That was kind of weird, wasn't it? I mean, he that was like, they didn't even show it. Well, he just took that vial yeah. and there was a little breeze. What'd you do with it? Lex is like, well, I, what do you mean what I do with it? You're uh, right fucking Well, hair. usually, it was cool. you know, when you're at the high school dance and Clark does it that, cool. there's a little bit of wind that hits Chloe's hair. Yeah. I didn't see Lex's hair move at all. How dare you? <laughs> How dare you? Uh, that night back at Smallville Medical, Martha's visibly concerned as her husband's surgery begins. Luckily, her son's yeah. friends are there for her as Pete and Lana show up. Down the hall, Garrett barges in and pulls a John Q as he exposes a bomb on his chest. I mean, come on. He went he went over the top. He wants his brother alive. His brother already died once, so it's like, big deal. You already saw him die once. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I, it was it's terrible that th that and like he didn't it's not like he f did he really feel like people weren't doing enough for his brother that he had to pull this stunt get my brother I a new like liberal was... blow this place the kingdoms come kingdom come putting everyone in the hospital at risk including the family that just opened the doors to him clark arrives back at the hospital to find swat on the scene setting a perimeter Clark then pleads with the sheriff to let him through and waves around the vial, claiming that this will cure Vince. Inside the hospital, we get some much-needed explanation from Pete as he tells Martha that the bomb of, on Garrett's chest is laced with meteor rock because his family uses it for their demolition business. Everything's going to really? be Really? I figured that, that out, out because it was green. <laughs> yeah, that would that would uh, clarify. That, Brian? That makes sense to me. I, uh because when he put the bomb on it on his chest, well, so when it, suddenly he was a bomb, I was like, "Where the hell did this come from?" But I guess they did drop a little hint about the demolition business, and I had totally missed that. Yeah, it just seems like, a, oh could, my gosh, what is he doing? It was What's a lot, on? but I guess that was their tie-in, and they just dropped it real nonchalantly. Yeah, I just thought kind of. I could just was... I could just picture Terrence being like, "What the hell?" <laughs> Yeah, because sometimes directors get good episodes and they're like, and then when they get those, they're like, I remember just t saying something to Terrence before and going, this is ridiculous. He goes, you're telling me you think I have a choice in the matter? <laughs> Let's just make it the best we can. You know? <laughs> Clark plays hostage negotiator and talks with Garrett about having the vial. The sheriff agrees to allow Clark to go in as long as the hostages are released. I thought that was kind of funny. It was just like, no, you know, like, please. I know him. He'll listen to me. All right. You've been in. You've been involved in everything in this damn town. I mean, every time I turn my head, Mister Kent, you're there, and now you want to be involved in this. He's got an explosive on his chest. I'm gonna let a 16 year old in there try to talk to him. <laughs> I can't. I can't invite the FB and the I over to somehow figure this out. This mess. I gotta rely on a 16 year old farm boy. Clark walks in and leaves the vial for Garrett to pick up. As he holds it, the liquid starts having a strange reaction, likely because of its proximity to the kryptonite. <gasps> Whoa. Is the vial some sort of concoction from Clark's blood that was taken in an earlier season? Whoa. Whoa. I think it was. The vial gets injected in Vince, but his vitals don't change at all. Garrett gets frantic and tells the doctors they need a liver now. He tells Scanlon to take the liver from Jonathan, who was just sitting comatose in the operating room. Garrett justifies this to Clark by saying, you'll still have a mom. Uh. I mean, he was getting pretty. This guy, this kid's losing it. He's losing it quickly. 
I mean, you know, it's it's a lot. We're making this kid. He's losing his brother. We're turning him into a villain is what we're doing. Are we not, folks? I mean, yeah. As they walk <laughs> into the hallway, a SWAT sniper takes a shot at Garrett, hitting him in the chest, but also causing him to click the detonator for the bomb. We get a sweet slow motion scene as Clark grabs a lead blanket, retrieves the bomb, takes it outside all before it explodes inside the hospital. I thought that was kind of cool. I was a little bit like, where are we right now when we were outside the hospital? Like, are we in a, back on the farm? Where? Oh, we're just right out in the back. Yeah. But uh, so I, when I was watching this episode, uh, my wife comes in and she's watching it and she always gets a kick out of seeing me so young. And uh, Clark runs in and grabs up the blanket and, and puts it on the uh, on the bomb. I go, that's a lead blanket. And she goes, yeah, I know. He just came from the x-ray. Duh. I was like, oh, OK. <laughs> I didn't know it. The next day in Metropolis, <laughs> Dr. Tank takes Lex to see Adam Knight. They find him in a cell shaking. It's obviously not him. It's a double because they didn't get him for that episode to just shake. You would have seen his face. That's um, the clue. You would have seen Adam's face. If they're paying for him to be a guest star, you'd see Adam's face. But you don't see his face. You see. And the other guy's body wasn't as sweet. So I knew it wasn't Adam. Later that night, Lex visits the town and finds Lana trying to clean up the loft and erase the fact that Adam was ever there. It was really weird because she was like, she had this look on her face in the beginning of that scene, wiping the wiping the glass, and it, she just looked so upset or angry. Irritated. Like, yeah. I can't get this out. I can't get it out. It was just kind of weird, wasn't it? Lady Macbeth in it over there. Yeah. Out damn spot. Um. Lex gets creepily close to her, dry her eyes, and says he's there if she ever wants to talk about it. Hey, baby. You, 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 had, a, you had a line here I had to listen to twice. It was oh, like, really? he came to see me. Um, to ha- he came to see me so I could help him get out of your life, and I'm here to make sure he stays that way. And I was like, is that correct English? I had to like watch it three times, and it does add up. But it's not easy. It doesn't roll off the tongue. Yeah. A lot of times it's hard to say lines like that that are hard to just that no, normal people don't speak. So you're like, you say things and you're like, what is, what's the line? Because it just doesn't flow effortlessly off the tongue. Over at Smallville line. Medical, we see Jonathan being wheelchaired out of his surgery. In standard Jonathan fashion, he's disobeying the doctor's orders and ready to get back on the farm. But before they leave, Clark talks to his parents about overhearing Lex with Dr. Tang and the content of the vial. Later, Clark heads over to the town. Lana apologizes for not sharing what uh, was going on with Adam. Clark says that she can talk to him about anything. Well, and she says, ditto. Well, <laughs> then immediately plays dumb to what was in the vial. <laughs> so that's I have sort no of what idea. happens. Uh Another episode this season mirroring a blockbuster, Fast and Furious, Final Destination, John Q. Uh, one of the coolest slow motions so far that we've seen. Um, you know, Tom, you got to work, like you said, with James and Tama, um, who played Vince, and uh, you were enamored by his yeah. body. Well, I just thought he was a cool dude. Like, I, I just, you know, you get these people who come in and, they don't have a lot of screen time, but when you're working with them, you see how much they're doing, and it's and it's inspiring. You're like, oh, let me, I gotta yeah. raise my bar a little bit. Again, it's it's so hard to be a guest star. Uh, we've talked about it ad nauseum, but like coming in and delivering lines and you know pl- doing what you do is is just I, I commend anybody who just steps in. It's fun. It's frightening. Uh, interesting things of note. Interesting. Things the season of three note. DVD contains a deleted scene in which Martha Kent attempts to stay behind when Garrett trades the hostages for his brother's medicine. This is the first episode to feature Clark time with the fluid-looking aura that Clark leaves behind himself while moving. One more time? No. no it's, one way to, it's one way to describe Clark it. Clark time with the fluid-looking aura, like... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Okay. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I tell you what, the writer's room must have been so happy when Clark got super hearing, because this is like eight episodes in a row where Clark just hears things. It's like the best way to like solve any gap in the plot. Oh, well, Clark can hear it. Okay. I didn't like this episode. I, I, I think there were some nice touching <laughs> yeah. moments with uh, about death maybe and about uh, family and Jonathan and, and Clark and Martha. Those were nice, but they were sort of fleeting. They There weren't many of those moments to sort of give me a um, keep my focus. 
I feel like the bomb was a big distraction. It was. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And the the bomb, well, we'll get to the Rosenbaum rating. Now it's time for the hotline. Talk All right. This is the hotline. These are the uh, first we're going to start out with patron privilege. Make sure you call in 213 Jet Cute. This is uh, Michael P. Michael P. always has something to say, and we love hearing what he has yeah. to say. I hope this is a good one, Michael. The pressure's on you, buddy. It's on you, man. Hey, everyone. It's Michael Pichetti from Texas. In the episode Resurrection, the character Garrett walked around for most of the episode in a demolition logo jacket and at one point even talked about his short fuse. Given all that he did, especially at the end of the episode, was this just ridiculously clever foreshadowing by the writers or what? I, I don't know if you guys caught it, but I want to hear your thoughts. Thanks. I, I didn't catch it, but now that I now that he said that, I think it's kind of cool. Uh, I, I never would have gotten that. That was the first time I've seen that episode in my life, and everything just kind of blurred together. Just kind of, I didn't, I didn't know. I was trying to get involved. Oh, wait till you, wait till you get to the next episode. Oh man, you know, again, we talk about this. There's there's good ones around the corner, but sometimes there's ones that aren't that good. All right, here's Alex. Let's hear what Alex had to say. You know what it is? It's most of the times, most of the time, I watch it and I can remember things that I really liked or this or this storyline. It was compelling in this one. I watched it and I don't even remember it. And I just watched it. I remember the bomb. I remember Jonathan. I remember these things we're talking about now that we're talking about them. But like, I was like, what is this? What happens in this episode? Who died? Anyway, here's uh here's Alex. What do you got to say for yourself, Alex? I bet this is a good question. I can feel it. I can feel it. Hey guys, it's Alex Baldwin calling from Hot Springs, Arkansas. There was a Alex super Baldwin? creepy moment where Lex is in the uh, apartment of, of, of the Talon with Lana and she's cleaning things up and he takes a rag and holds her face and starts wiping her face. Did I? Mean, I? He's a junior in high school and he's, you know, obviously quite older. Um, do you think they were setting up already his love interest in her or was Lex just being creepy because I think in the next episode he sits right next to her in front of a fire and places a hand on her back and starts talking lovingly to her so all right all right guess. thank you Alex <laughs> um or maybe he's just trying to wipe shit off her face uh, the, it, no. I didn't think it was creepy it was creepy what did I do it, just like it was so slow and just deliberate and just and like she also maybe it's also the way she reacted too. she like sort of like turned her head and closed her eyes a little bit. But she was also sensitive because all these things just happened. Or he's like, it's OK. I know you were you're worried about Adam and you're emotional. And she is a minor. But I didn't, Lex didn't do anything. He didn't have lectual healing. <laughs> all right. Here comes what? Kevin. It was a purple rag, too. Purple rag. Hi, oh. my name's Tevin. I'm from Arizona. And I just wanted to ask about the episode Resurrection and uh how was it to do that slow mo scene um, where you have to stop the take off the bomb off of the bad guy? Uh, just wanted to know. Um, thank you guys. Big fan of the show. Um, hope you guys have a good one. Kevin, you rock, buddy. Tom, I mean that's that's a good question. Um, and not to bore you with too much detail, but when you get into the Clark time stuff, I, I've said before we had to learn how to do it. And part of it for me was you have to understand that what you're doing seems so ridiculous in reality, but it, it's going to have this effect afterward. And so you have to really commit to that and, and trust the DP and, and the director who are watching it. Um, in the next episode, there's a, there's a part where Clark's asked a, asked a question and then instead of backing up to make an easy exit, which I should have done as an actor, I ask a question and then I back up four steps, turn and then run out. And it's the most awkward thing. And, it, it still bugs me, but um, <laughs> you have to you have to just kind of remind yourself that this is going to have a sound effect. It's going to have a visual to it, and you just have to like or you'll drive yourself try to run crazy. as best. Well, and you also have to understand it's slow motion, so you have to take your time because you know it's going to be slowed down. Because if you just run normal and then they slow it down, it looks weird. So there's there's a there's a couple different things you have to keep in mind in order to to try to sell the super speed of it all, and it was all a learning curve. Ah, that was some good information, man. Yeah. Uh, this is Jason. Jason, what do you got for us, buddy? And you don't blink. You don't want to blink during no. slow-mo. Hey, it's Jason from Pittsburgh. One. This question is from Michael, season three, episode 15, Resurrection. I love the short scene that you had with Chloe. 
Here's my question. Does Lex like Chloe, in your opinion? Does Lex like Chloe? Does he respect her? That's my question. Love the show. Love you guys. No. No. I, look, I think she's I, just I don't you know know she's a pawn. I, you know how, what, what Lex thinks about her? He doesn't. I feel like Lex just doesn't think about Chloe. He doesn't think about anything except the situation at hand. The sort of, you know, Clark, his relationship with Clark, uh, business, life. Chloe is just something that he's, she's not on the radar, but sometimes she gets in his way and he knows that she doesn't like him. And I think many times Lex tries to, uh, he wants people to like him, like everyone wants people to like them. And so I think he tries to do the right thing, but at a certain point he's just like, I'm not, I'm not trying anymore. I'm just going to, I'm, I'm doing what I do. I mean, you never see Chloe and, and Lex meeting at the Talon to have a cappuccino together just to, just to catch up. No. I think they both use each other as tools to another means. Yep. All right. This is uh, Leanne. Hi, Leanne. Hey, guys. It's Leanne P., your patron. Okay. So in this episode, the helicopter pilot is also in the X-Files. And this tends to be one of many visual and auditory throwbacks, or not throwbacks, but cues to the TV show The x file So I'm wondering, did someone on the cast, on the crew, someone in Smallville land, did they somehow have some sort of connection to the TV show The x file Thanks, guys. Bye. I think some people did work for The X-Files. Um, well, the, the, the it's a Vancouver actor scene. So, yeah, we, you know. I had probably some of the Vic- same people it- and... I don't know. Yeah, that's a good question. I don't. I don't know. I don't notice that stuff though. I'm just gonna look up the casting director to see if that was the same. Which well, we had the cigarette smoking man a yeah. couple episodes ago yep. from the X Files, but I I think those are all Vancouver actors that when a show, mm. you know, like uh, who is our principal Quan that we like so much? He's on X Files. You know, it's like they you're all. It's see, a rotation yeah, if you're an actor repetition. there. What are you gonna say, Ryan? I was just looking at the casting department, and I mean, there's a there's an LA caster, and there's a couple of Vancouver casters who probably worked on every episode, and there's probably a lot of crossover if they're working on X Files as well. Hmm. Or if they're probably they're, they're the probably all on Arrow <laughs> and Flash, yeah. and Clark and Lois. International folks, these are uh, texts from international folks. Tamara from New Zealand. When Garrett let the hostages go, you reckon they missed a beat with Clark and Lana, like uh, him asking if she's okay or some something caring. Uh, did they miss a moment? Uh, I don't know. I think everybody knows that Clark and Lana care about each other, so maybe you didn't need to see it. Tom, you agree? I didn't miss it. Patar, this season has had a lot of guest stars so far. Who's been your favorite that has struck stuck out? Uh, the guy who wasn't Rutger Howard. Yeah, he was great. He was great. Yeah. And he talked like this. Listen to me, Lex. You don't know what you're getting into. Lex, kind of like a grasp your Liam Neeson or something because he had a little bit of an Irish accent because he's Irish and uh, he talked like that. Bria from France. I had completely forgotten that Adam was the reason the Talon apartment was introduced into the show, which became one of the most prominent sets of the series. So far, is there any plot that you'd rediscovered watching the show that really surprised you? Uh, yeah, I forgot about the whole blood serum Clark thing. <laughs> I totally forgot about the whole thing. Yeah, I forgot about this whole thing with Adam and all this stuff. I didn't. I didn't, didn't ring a bell at all. I, I didn't remember <laughs> any of it. Okay, Rosenbaum rating system. We're gonna go right to Ryan to start out with this one. Ryan, let me ask you this. Yeah. Did you like this episode? No. Okay. Good. So we're we're probably at a heater or below. Bomb. One bomb for Ryan Tez. I'm going to go with uh, the old John Heater. I'm going to go with the bomb. I'm going to go wow. with the bomb. Uh, how many people got saved? Death how many died? Count. Three dead. Vince dies. Who cares? Ga- who, who cares? Yeah, <laughs> who cares? Vince dies. Garrett gets shot. Vince re-dies. One saved. That still counts as one. Jonathan got saved, didn't he? Well, he wasn't necessarily kind of? dying i mean he was having an operation what happened to garrett right. did they cover that no didn't garrett die he got shot in the chest yeah he gets shot he died it says garrett got shot Great. he got 
we just don't talk about it in the episode. It was just left That's like, fine. like we didn't talk about. Oh, it for poor two guy! Lost seasons. his brother twice, and then uh, tried to blow up the whole hospital. And what, what would be on the on his gravestone? Yeah. Uh, yeah, kids, kids, it's not the answer. Don't, 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 don't follow in his footsteps. Maybe on his there. gravestone we'll say, "Life's a bomb." No, oh. I don't know. Uh, one saved the entire hospital, saved by Clark. Through 15 episodes in season three, 18 dead, 24 saved. Series 77 dead, 84 saved. And now it's time for Ryan's favorite scene. Ryan's favorite good, good luck. Scene. I, you know, I saw a couple of good ads in the middle of the Hulu um, when I was watching. You know, hey, should we just try without him telling us? Should we just both guess one? All right, you guess Go. one. Yeah. If you get it, All right. if we both get it, we get two points for just getting it without him reading them out. All right. All right. I'm going to go the bomb. The I'm going to go the bomb save with the lead. Me too. I was going to go the bomb save. Man. That's, that's the only scene in the. the Ryan's episode, like, that's the only scene that's good. All right. So we both get two points. Yeah. Both get two points. I agree. It was the only scene that was even close to being good. I liked watching the end credits because then I was done with the episode. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I'm going to give it a bomb and a half. I'm going to go a bomb and a half on this one. Oh, my gosh. Just, you know, it was like Boar State University. I mean, the thing is, <laughs> it was just. I, I mean, we talk a lot about them bringing in like one character just for an episode that's like, oh, he's been here the whole time, like that kind of thing. I, But I think I'll give him the benefit of the doubt because I think that was Clark's friend that he made in the waiting room, like during all these operations. That might have been why they were so close. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. That's so funny that we were able to pick the only <laughs> scene. I've never even had that idea before. Good Lord. Well, you know. Sorry for joining us, folks, for this episode. The banter is entertaining, I hope. Yeah, hold We on. learn things. Yeah, we do. I mean, sometimes we just got to bite the bullet and, and just be honest with ourselves. You can't like, You can't be forced to like something, you know. Um, next week we're going to be, uh, you know, we're going to get into a big episode. It's called crisis. It's season three, episode 16. We're nearing the end. So if you're, uh, if you're excited, like we are, keep watching these episodes, keep listening. Cause a lot of good stuff is coming your way. I don't even remember what happens, but I have a feeling in the last six, five or six episode, there'll be some good ones. You know that's going to happen. Uh, let us know your thoughts on the episode over on our socials at Talkville Podcast or Talkville Pod. Show your support by support. Join join and, and give us your support for patreon.com slash Talkville. Uh, we really appreciate it. It helps the podcast more than you know, as you know. And uh, you can go on my Instagram at the Michael Rosenbaum on the link tree with all the links to Cameo. Go see Tom on Cameo. Come see us at the cons. Um, I appreciate it. And uh, we love you. Tom, thanks for being here, buddy. Thanks, guys. Ryan. Thanks, everybody. Remember, folks, <laughs> always hold on to Smallville. And we can't forget about our lovable patrons. Without you, we couldn't do this podcast, period. I said it a million times, and I'll say it a million more times. We can't do the podcast without you. Patreon.com slash TalkVille. Here are the shout-outs. Tom's burping. And uh, here we go. Tom, take us off. Yeah, that was my mom's chili. It's amazing. I uh, wish you guys could try it. Nikki G, Lee N P, Raj C, Santiago M, Little Lisa, Thomas Elite Blower. Thank you for your questions. Uh, Sophie M, Betsy D, uh, Ray H, Karen Apple M, Danielle B, ninety nine more. Leilani and Brett G. Always hold on to Smallville. S Levan G, DJ Kento in the house. Garrett W, Kimberly L, Tom N, Jason W, Osama A. Lana rhymes with banana. W. Yes, I said it like that again. Nancy D, Brian G, Sarah W, Amanda R, Teddy127, Michael P, Theo M, Ryan R, Jordan M, Hillary B, Randy B, Craig G, and Christy R. Karen P, Jorel, Heather and Craig, Nico P, I made small bill C butts. Brian H, Eric K, brought to you by AG1. Kristen B, Craig C, Nanine W, Stephanie K, Darth Achilles, brought to you by Better Help. Finky, Tamara, H, Stephen F, damn, who's that? Jeanette E, Deadvid, General Zod, Big D, Doug R, Carlos C, Tommy Z, Boston 68, Kendall Limerick's guy, Corey L, Mr. Home Arcade, Amanda K, Jesse C, Claire M, D Brown, Karen Era M, Eldon Supremo, Leslie V, McBurts, Ginger Moose, Christopher, 
Christoph S. Michelle M. Drew, Brittany S. Marisol P. Michael Kang doesn't blank. Sebastian F. Sourpuss Cranky Pants. Matthew and Lincoln B. Carol B. The Coopers. Mm, Coopers. Always loved meeting you guys. Marion Louise L. C. Glow? Geo. C. Glow. C. Geo. Is it Geo? C. Geo. It looks like an elf. It looks like an elf from here. You're blind. Cindy C. Nikki L. Bish. Bash, Bosch's Lemon Pledge, good for you. Shannon, <laughs> Rams with Flo Shannon, M, Bri Brian S, Tina E, Matt R, Anthony R, uh, Jen T, Wait, Jen Tull. you said Matt R, Anthony R? Matt R, Anthony R, Jen T. Oh. Jess T. Oh. Cassie B, Felicia R, Danny M, DS underscore the underscore RN. I know Michael says it differently. JS, Rachel D, Gingerous Prime, Gingerous Prime, and Nate D. When you're rich, when you're rich, you're not crazy, you're eccentric. Paul W, Jonas One, love the Jonas Brothers. Samantha S, Starkville's House of L podcast. Okay, guess they have their own podcast. Sage C, Spicy Brown says, Carrie A, the Alexander Castle, Kyle F. We love you. Thank you for the support. And uh, we'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>